Welcome to Reflect on This. Hello, I am Johnny Henshaw. This is the podcast version of devotionals I send to my family and friends. In these devotionals, I share the things I'm learning about the ways and nature of God through applying my study of the scriptures to the world around me. And don't forget to keep listening at the conclusion of today's episode to hear about my recommended resources, such as podcasts that I find helpful and encouraging, books that inspired some of these episodes, and ministries that I want you to know about. So let's get started. Please join me today as we reflect on this. Here is a helpful quote from chapter 15 of Dr. Chris Thurman's book entitled, The Lies We Believe. Most of us have a mixture of healthy self-focus, which is an appropriate concern about ourselves and our valid needs being met, and unhealthy self-focus, which is an overly strong sense of self-centeredness and entitlement about our needs being met. God calls us to live in the former and die to the latter. Focus on dying to our unhealthy self-focus and fulfilling the biblical challenge to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Ephesians 4.22 Dr. Thurman then lists nine characteristics of unhealthy self-focus. Have a grandiose sense of self-importance. Fantasize about success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Feel you are a cut above. Require excessive admiration. Feel entitled to special treatment. Exploit others to achieve personal gain. Lack empathy for the feelings, wishes, and needs of others. Envy others and feel others are envious of you. Have a pompous and arrogant behavior. Well, if the truth be told, each of us probably struggle with some of these characteristics at various times and in various varying degrees. But when these characteristics are exhibited in consistently excessive ways, the condition is referred to as narcissism. Who are the best biblical examples of unhealthy self-focus? The Pharisees. Consider the words of Jesus from Matthew 23, verses 3 through 7. The Pharisees do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels of their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. So you can see that the Pharisees displayed all nine characteristics of unhealthy self-focus. Consider this. God is love, 1 John 4, 8. He has revealed His love for us through Jesus John 3.16 The primary characteristic that Jesus uses to display His love for us is through His humility. Matthew 11.29 says, All of you, take up my yoke and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. So if we are to put off the old self of unhealthy self-focus, how do we do that? Live a life of humility, following the example of Jesus. First, why is this important for us to do? Well, the Bible has many warnings on this topic, such as the following. 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 through 5. But realize this, that in the last days difficult times will come, for men will be lovers of self. I'll pause here. And and note that the first characteristic in Paul's long list of sinful behaviors is lovers of self. In many ways, all of the other sinful behaviors listed in these verses are merely the results of the first one, unbridled self-centeredness. 
lovers of self. And Romans 16, verses 17 through 18, Now I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause dissensions and obstacles contrary to the doctrine you have learned. Avoid them, for such people do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. But back to the really hard question, how do we live a life of humility? Dr. Thurman offers the following lists of the primary characteristics of humility. I propose that we learn these characteristics and ask God to develop these characteristics in our lives. To each of these characteristics, I've added some relevant scriptures I discovered in my personal study. Here are the characteristics of humility. Number one, aim to serve, not to be served. Don't consider yourself entitled. Jesus is our example. Do what he did. Matthew 20, verses 26 through 28. Whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. And John thirteen fourteen, If I then, the Lord and the Teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Number two, value others more highly than yourself. Philippians 2 verses 3 through 4 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And Luke 9 23, Then he said to them all, If anyone wants to come with me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Examples of valuing others more than yourself? Don't promote yourself. Honor and respect other people, such as when they are talking. Number three, think accurately about yourself. Romans 12 verse 3 says, For if by the grace given to me, I warn everyone among you. For, for by the grace given to me, I warn everyone among you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought, not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance, but to rate his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith apportioned by God to him. Avoid either either overvaluing or undervaluing our own abilities, gifts, and traits. Humility requires sober judgment of self. Humility is an accurate sense of self. As is often quoted, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. Freely admit your flaws, mistakes, and failures, and ask God and others for help to change. Number four, submit to one another. Ephesians 5.21 says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Some examples of submitting to one another. Be teachable. Seek the advice of others. Choose to be corrected without defending yourself. Choose to not have to be right. Don't consider any task as too small for you or beneath you. Be patient with hurting people. Jesus is our role model on submission. He submitted to God the Father, John 6, 38. He taught submission to government authorities, Mark 12, 17. Note that, as followers of Jesus, we are ultimately submitted to God and are therefore following the example of Jesus. If there is ever a question about whether or not to submit to another person, such as when they invite us to do something that violates our conscience, our submission to God always provides our answer. And number five, let others be the center of attention. 1 Peter 5.5 says, And all of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, for God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Examples of how to let others be the center of attention. Rejoice when others are celebrated. 
Let other people have a better story than yours. Avoid promoting yourself. Today, I encourage you to reflect on this. Today's featured resource is the Bible Study software package entitled eSword. This free Bible study software is available for download to a wide range of computers and mobile devices, including Windows and Mac computers and Apple and Android tablets and phones. The download includes several free public domain resources, including Bibles, dictionaries, commentaries, devotionals, and maps. You can then download from within the eSword program many more free public domain resources. You can optionally purchase whatever copyrighted resources you want to create a powerful study library. One of the greatest benefits of Bible study with this software is the multi-window display so that you can simultaneously have windows open to a Bible translation, a dictionary, and a commentary. They are automatically linked so that if you select a verse, then the corresponding entry in the selected dictionary and commentary are displayed. You can also easily compare Bible translations by viewing them in parallel windows. For the Bible translations that have embedded Strong's numbers, referencing the corresponding Hebrew or Greek word, you can hover over a Strong's number and a tooltip pops up with the Strong's definition for that word. To learn more and to get a free download of this amazing study tool, on your computer, go to esword.net. That's e-sword.net. On your mobile device, go to your app store and search for esword. That's e-sword.